Thank you, Professor Rastogi. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Is it clear, the, the yeah. sound? Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Uh, I would like to say thank you to ISR and the committee and uh, all the, the people who are involved in this uh, conference. Uh, as, um, I think it's already about three months we not meet anymore in uh, online, by online, but I'm very happy to see you all by healthy condition, I hope, and uh, take care of our mental health also. And uh, I would like to share my screen if uh, possible. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, sorry, I think it's too big. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I got this. Um, wait a moment. I think uh, slide is coming perfectly. You can move the uh, slide also. Yeah, um, okay. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, I got this uh, title from uh, Dr. Ranjit. I hope I can share uh, uh, so much about this. Uh, actually, the update of forensic pathology. And uh, right now, we, we changed title and function in forensic pathology and anthropology. Uh, uh, for maybe for the is it working the slide a uh, slide is not moving yeah 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 something wrong earlier it was working so you can uh, use the keyboard arrow uh, arrow of the keyboard um i i tried to stop sharing i tried to share again wait a moment It's not working. No, no, we are not able to see them. Mm -hmm. Now it's coming. Mm -hmm. You can make this as a full slide mode. Well, we have two. Is it double? No. And no. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody can see? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yes. Okay. So it's a. Uh, um, some people maybe don't understand what is the difference or why people why there's a forensic pathologist and also uh, a forensic anthropologist. So it's kind. Of, uh, uh, actually, the pathologist uh, looking for the dead body, even that it is a uh, fresh or decomposed one, or even already being a uh, skeleton, or sometimes we found only uh, body parts. And the forensic anthropologist is uh, looking for about the skeleton. This is uh, the difference uh, between us is uh, that we, the forensic pathologist, is uh, you, uh, we are a medical doctor and then we're learning. Uh, 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 specialist in forensic, usually in forensic pathology. But in Indonesia, we also are learning for uh, clinical forensic medicine. And also sometimes we learn anthropology uh, and DNA as well, because sometimes in the field we work, uh, usually we found as well the skeletons of human remains. And so we examine that body, fresh or decomposed human remains, even though it is a mutilation, or even we only found the body parts uh, and also skeletons. And here, the forensic anthropologist, I think uh, some of uh, them is a medical doctor, and also some of them is forensic pathologist. And uh, um, anatomical, but mostly anatomical scientists or they have the degree in biology and they're learning also the anatomy. And um, uh, they also working mostly about skeletons and human remains. Here, uh, it's a 
sometimes uh, in our forensic science or forensic major, we are overlaps each other. Uh, it's a forensic pathology. We're learning also forensic anthropology. And then there is a forensic archaeology. But usually uh, there is also a degree. Uh, they have forensic archaeology and forensic anthropology in a master degree. And then we have the forensic odontology. There is the, the um, uh, and then of course we have this uh, forensic radiology as well. And uh, there is also forensic science within that laboratory that uh, should be support our um, uh, examination to finding the cause of death and looking for the trauma and etc. And here, uh, the purpose, uh, the task or the aims of us is actually one is identification. Um, first is, is this human or non-human? And then if it is a human, who is this person? And we also looking, is there any trauma on the victims or on this uh, person the, that found? And uh, if, we, if we could, we can also should find out the cause of death of this person. Is it uh, natural or unnatural? Uh, because sometimes there is a trauma that uh, 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 because of uh, after, or we call it post-mortem trauma that not related to the deaths of the person. And uh, actually uh, the technology is speeding up with the research and everything and to make the identification more focused and in the trauma and to find the cause of death that more um, uh, the, the most uh, the most diagnosis for looking for the cause of death of the person and looking for is that uh, related on the unrelated to the case such as if we uh, found the fingerprint in the scene on the scene uh, is it the the fingerprint of the person or we found the dna of the person in the scene uh, is it that person that we found the dna and fingerprint is related to the cases or not related to the cases and then but uh, we found that we the person behind the science can catch up the technology. Why? Because uh, one is the knowledge and experience of the examiner themselves, and do the lack of facility. Usually, the problem is always uh, I think in Indonesia or uh, mostly our is the lack of facility because of the problem of the funding or the money problems. And advancement in forensic pathology, we can find it. Uh, actually, we can do it on the scene or uh, in the mortuary. Sorry. Okay, and this is the from the forensic pathology, we have this uh, multispectral, uh, actually, uh, um, like uh, Professor Emily said, we not advertise or endorse some uh, company but uh, what I would like to say that this is the the company that could uh, help us in finding the the cases uh, uh, more trendy like this in forenscope actually when we have these cases that we we um, suspect that the 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 victim uh, got raped from the perpetrator and we would like to see uh, is that a bruises or is that uh, the, the stain of the sperm and others uh, from the, the perpetrator on the victim. Then we can uh, looking for by first is a by uh, the corposcopy of the vagina and then this uh, Sometimes uh, we we would like to using that not too invasive to the person that we examine or to the dead body that we examine, or we can see more um, more clearly 
of uh, the bruises and others. So is using this uh, mobile multispectral forensic tablet and then using uh, the UV uh, or the light system, we can found the, the, the bruises and others. See, this is the one thing. And then the second is uh, we looking for uh, the, the uh, we can see from the uh, light source. The, this is using the photography, uh, alternative light source uh, using the camera. And we can see the ultraviolets uh, by the infrared. And then we can uh, differentiate it is a bruises or is this a bite mark that actually we cannot see by our eyes uh, from the beginning we do the examination in the mortuary. And then uh, we also can find uh, um, uh, uh, the, the blood pattern or the, the blood stain in the dark and a pattern in the clothing. And this is the, the system or the technology we can use to looking for it. Because sometimes uh, uh, well, for the dead body or the victim that already decomposed is uh, quite difficult for us to using our own eyes to see. So this is good for using the light source photography to do. This is the camera. This uh, you can you can looking for uh, if you would like to see more about the technique and the the system on that. You can see for the Foster and Freeman that actually they usually uh, having these free webinars. I think every month. Also, they have this recorded um, uh, webinar that you can watch uh, repeatedly from the the website. And uh, you can see from the, uh, the the stain and others by this camera. Uh, we have uh, using this in Indonesia as well in some of uh, hospitals in mortuary. And uh, others is um, the forensic radiology that helping the forensic pathologists to do the examination, uh, which is, uh, as we know, that there is a, um, a post-mortem CT scanning. And also in Zurich University, uh, they're using this virtual autopsy. And if you would like to learn more uh, and, uh, about the updating of the knowledge, they also right now is enhancing to use the ultrasound to see the cases of the fetal postmortem. Uh, before, they uh, also learning using the MRI to see the problem or the trauma in the soft tissue, usually the cases of the children or infant. So this is the updating of the technology that we can use uh, for us in forensic pathology. And here also about the DNA, uh, the human genomes, and the, uh, the pathologies, usually uh, we are um, difficult to find the cause of death of the sudden death cases. Usually we found it, um, we know it's a problem with the heart. Uh, there is a, so the, there is also research in the DNA. And then uh, the, the uh, professor Angel Carcedo from University of Santiago, the Compostela, uh, uh, learning about this and research about this that the heart failure uh, by Brugada syndrome, and we can found the, the DNA of the human genome that uh, uh, can found the 30% to 35% of the sudden death of the heart failure is about uh, because the Brugada syndrome on the heart. So here, uh, the article that they already published, so many articles about the Brugada syndrome by the DNA. And then this is a medical legal perspective on the sudden cardiac death in young athletes. Uh, and uh, this is because the uh, Brugada syndrome. So uh, for us, uh, when we have the task or the purpose looking for the cause of death, that um, we also need to do to tell the family for the closure because uh, it happened suddenly, sudden death. And then the family is confused uh, and want to know what is the cause of death of the person that they see uh, before is very healthy. And then of course, uh, by we can uh, finding this kind of um, uh, 
uh, cause of that, also uh, others with the, the closure for the family, also we can make the prevention for the family as uh, they uh, will they pass this genetic disorder to other uh, of their descendants. So it's also uh, information for the family and the relatives as well. It's, and also I would like to say about the advancement in forensic anthropology. Uh, before in the morning that uh, Professor Emilio also already said about the import, superimposition, the update technology, because superimposition we already know since uh, uh, before. And then there is uh, also uh, the forensic radiology working with forensic anthropology in bone city scanning, usually for looking for uh, trauma. And then there is also, as we know, there is a radiocarbon analysis to know how long this uh, uh, victim already died. And then uh, the ancient DNA, uh, we're looking for uh, the human genome and what causing the death of the maybe the human remains or the skeletons we found. And here, uh, there is a case uh, in Portugal. There is a, I think in the Northern side of the Portugal, there is a team from the Coimbra and then uh, actually there are uh, forensic archeology span and then they found these uh, skeletons. And uh, there um, it says uh, looking uh, uh, because this is a skeleton and then the, there is cooperation within the forensic archeology span and arch uh, anthropology. And then to looking for more um, about the cause of that of this person. And then we do the genetic analysis of the, the skeletons and found out that there is a rare genetic condition that uh, giving an extra X chromosome that we know that this is a Klinefelter syndrome. And we found that uh, if uh, uh, there is um, genetic information, uh, there's, uh, we can see from the, the teeth of the, the the, the victim that uh, they also uh, have a larger uh, the uh, shape of the teeth. And then also there is a um, uh, um, uh, um, defect, defect on the mandible and um, uh, at the maxilla of the, the skeletons. Then uh, it, um, it can be a serious gum infection and damage the soft tissue. And um, I, we can see that uh, from this um, uh, problem in uh, uh, mutation of the X chromosome of the DNA of the person and then having a problem on the cyst, there's also uh, uh, should be working with forensic odontology as well. And then the, there is a problem in the infection of their gums. To, uh, to to be uh, making them infection infected and then uh, uh, die. This is uh, so, um, uh, there is actually so many uh, update and advancement uh, more in pathology and anthropology, even though I say right now, it may be in um, tonight or in the next two weeks, we already have the update again because there is uh, a research ongoing about this, all the forensic science, uh, all major. So my conclusion is that it's forensic major, uh, uh, we learn is to make someone competence in their field uh, and to identify and finding the trauma or we should publish the cause of death of the victims or the death should be comprehensive works within the forensic major itself. And then uh, mostly the forensic major will be, will be, we should be, we, we always be overlapping each other. So uh, we should be doing the teamwork in the best solution to make the report of the case. Uh, so I would like to say thank you for ASR and uh, that's all. Thank you.